Hello, and welcome to Funfold Friday with my stamp studio. Sorry, I'm just a couple minutes late. I realized I had not printed out the host code, so I just need to do that really quick, and I'll be right with you. All right. And these sale dates here, I just also need to update my dates on here. We'll go to February. February 24th. Okay, that's what I thought it was. All right, just going to make sure my date was correct on here. Oh, why won't you delete? I'll be right with you. I promise. I probably should have just held off starting live, but I didn't. Okay, I'm not sure why. Magic is not working for me. My keyboard... It's not responding. All right. There, it's printing. Okay, and I'll grab it in just a moment then. When I flip the camera down, we'll go grab it. Hello, Beth. Welcome. So today is Friday, and it is February 17th. Uh, it is Funfold Friday at 5 p.m. Okay, it started at like 5.02. Mm, sorry. And uh, I'll be showing you three Funfolds tonight. The class kit is available for you, and each class kit comes with all the supplies you need to create your fun folds. There'll be three designs, and you'll make two of each card. So you'll get the supplies to make those cards. Um, there'll be embellishments that I'm going to use and ribbon that I'm going to use. I'll cut the ribbon for you um, in those cases that I'm using it, and I'll put that in your kit. But the embellishments you'll need to have on your own, or you can purchase them. How do you get the class kit? Well, you get the class kit by placing a $35 in my online store using the host code I will have in just a moment when it prints. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that way uh, I'm able to bring you more classes if you help me out and use that host code. Um, what I do is I, I use those hostess rewards to um, be able to purchase other stamp sets and supplies that I can send in future class kits. So, ooh. Oh, well. Um, so the sales period for the Funfold class, I'm out of ink, really. <sighs> okay, I'll have to handwrite the host code. <clears throat> Let me get a pen and paper here. Hold on, sorry, I apologize. My handwriting isn't all that great, so I'm not happy that I have to write all this. Okay. No one likes their hand own handwriting, right? So I'm going to concentrate this. Okay. So it runs from Feb 17th through Feb 24th. And the host code is P A Z 2 R. Because this is so easy. You know, Stampin' Up! comes up with these codes. I don't. Because I surely wouldn't have such a difficult one. I know, I, right? I had no idea I was even low on ink. <laughs> I'm sure I've ignored it when I kept saying, hey, you're low on ink. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm going to flip my camera down and we're going to get started. Because I don't want to delay. I um, hope you're able to maybe try these out this weekend. And if you are, please post them to the My Stamp Studio group. If you're not part of that juke group, go ahead and join it. Um, make sure that if you're on Facebook, you should be able to get right to that from my page here. It is a public group. If you're watching this on YouTube and you would like to join, I'll have the description in the description below. You'll see a link to my Facebook page and my Facebook group. If you're not on Facebook, well then just keep watching YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so that you will know when I post new videos. If you click that little notification bell, that means YouTube will tell you when you log in, hey, Beth posted a new video. So, yeah, it's always fun to be notified of something fun and new, right? All right, so I'm going to flip down my camera. Now, I don't have my card. I don't want to show you the finished card because I want to take you through the whole process of creating the card. So it's a little bit of a surprise with it. So if you get dizzy, close your eyes. I'm going to turn my camera down. Okay, so now we got my desktop here. Okay, and I just want to start this page here so I can see it. Okay, I know this is really hard to read. 
So I'll just bring it up here so you can see it. So this is the Funfold Week 2 host code. I will post this in the video description as well as in the comments of our video today. So actually, I'm going to do that right now. Well, I can't. I've got to create a link for it. So it will be there right after the video. Alrighty. So last time we met, I'm going to share with you the fun folds that we made last time. We did this little masculine one. Today, I actually have another masculine one to share with you. I really like this card. I almost grabbed it again thinking that we didn't make it, and I almost made it again for today. I'm like, oopsie, no, that's not what I want to do. And then this gatefold. All right, so if you missed the um, ordering special to get the PDF and the card kit, so sorry, but you can watch the video again. Um, I'll have these uploaded to YouTube. Hopefully they finish loading tonight. And uh, otherwise I'll put, you should be able to search on it for Funfold. Um, look for hashtag my stamp studio Funfold. And hopefully that will pull the video up for you. Okay, let's start with card one here. Yeah, I just want to get my little papers in order here. You know what? I'm going to make this card one because I just have it all sitting here. So as we go through, I will tell you the supplies that we're going to be using. So basically, I'm going to show you the template. This is my little template for the card that we're going to be making. Okay, It will lay flat in an envelope just like this, but it pops up. Okay, Now, you can either have it go this way or you can have it go this way. For today's card, we're going to go this way. But keep in mind, you can always have it like this, and it does stand. Okay. This one I had squashed, so it may not stand right. That was my bad. But I promise, yours will stand if you assemble it correctly. But we're going to go that way, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. So let's get started on the first things that we need. So I'm going to pull out my little class kit. So in your class kit, it'll come something like this with all the supplies you need. There's going to be a cute little sticker on it saying Funfold Week 2 with a link to the video. And um, if when there are your card bases that are eight and a half or four and a quarter by 11, I'm going to do one of the score lines for you. So just so it fits in this bag better. So you'll get this kit along with any ribbon that we use. Uh, we're going to be using our twine today. And I forgot to pull that out. So let me grab over here my twine. Do do. Well, okay. Oh, here it is. Is that my twin? Here's my open twin. <clears throat> so we're we'll probably be using the Essentials Baker Pack. Essentials Baker's Twine Essential Pack and just regular linen thread. Okay, so I'll have some cut pieces thrown in your kit for you. Any die cutting that we'll do will also be included in here, so you won't have to worry about the die cutting unless it's part of a featured bundle that I'm featuring. Well, you know what? No, I'm just going to say all the die cutting will be done for you. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, the only ones I can't do are the ones that we stamp and then die cut. You'll have to either have the dies yourself or cut it out by hand. Sorry about that. I had to clarify because all of a sudden I realized I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do that because I have to stamp it first. Okay, so I have a piece of, going back to my kit here, so each of your projects will be in an envelope. You'll have two envelopes, you know, one for each one, but all of your supplies for both cards will be in one of the envelopes here. But on this one, I really wanted to show you how I made these. So... I'm going to show you step by step how I did this. Sorry, I was looking for my basic white that I just had next to my foot and it's gone. Because I'll need that and a piece of basic white. We'll need some score, I mean, some cutting plates and our mini boss, which we're going to put right over here in the corner. You know, I can't see my screen, so I don't know what I'm showing here. So. It was a very fun day today, so while I'm just kind of getting my stuff a little more organized here, I had to take my dog to the vet, so that's always interesting. Yeah, 
it was uh it was pretty funny because i i had to severely sedate him because he doesn't always handle going to the vet so well yeah so that was always interesting because he's just a little stinker yeah he actually was really really super good when we were in there so i'm really i'm actually very proud of him um he behaved so well because sometimes you know sometimes little cooper doesn't behave so well so okay so i'm grabbing a piece of our um I forgot what this paper's called right here. It's called the Enjoy the Journey. So this 12 by 12 paper here is a celebration item. So you can get this for free when you purchase $50 by online store. So take advantage of this. So not only will you get the class kit, but you'll get some of the embellishments. You'll get a package of embellishments that we're going to use tonight. And um, also, we're going to do the embellishments at the end so I can grab one that coordinates with all three. Um, and you get to pick out a celebration item from Stamping Up. So it's totally worth it. You get the class kit, you get an embellishment, and you get your choice of a $50 celebration item for free. Did I say for free? I mean for free. All right. This is not the color I had cut, so I need to change it. I'm going to change it to this sheet here. Oh, I was using this side, that's why. Never mind. Look how pretty this is, too. I really like that. That's gorgeous. So today I'm going to be looking at doing a little, I don't know, a St. Patrick's Day card. I know it's early for St. Patrick's Day, but mm -mm, I'm doing it. I am doing it. And we want to use Garden Green. And now this looks almost like a... A pool party. It's actually Coastal Cabana. So let me grab my Wright's Designer Series paper. I had grabbed out my subtles because I thought it was pool party. So I grabbed the wrong one when I made this. So let me grab the correct package. So we're going to grab this. Now your Designer Series paper will be cut for this project. But I want to show you, like I said, step by step, going through how you create all these. And let's just see. Now, it'll be random on which which pattern you get. Just saying. It depends on what I have left in my stack. You'll get the correct colors. It just might be random which pattern. And I kind of was thinking. Hmm. 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 Oh, yeah. I almost think that I might have to switch it out to pool party because I'm pretty limited on what I have left for my Coastal Cabana. And I don't want to shortchange anyone of this card. You know, we're going to use such a small piece. We'll just stick with it. Okay, we'll use the... Again, you're going to get a random piece of this. Okay, so I have my card base. Where did my card bases go? There we go. Oh, it's right here. I pulled it out, right? <laughs> my card base here. Now, my card base is, I pre-cut these. It's four and a quarter inches wide by nine and a half inches long. And I'm going to cut my other designer series paper, and then we'll actually start into the fun fold. And this just didn't see me. Well, that's what we're going with. Okay. So now, I want to take a one and a quarter inch piece of my Coastal Cabana here. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this to four right away. Because it's going to be one and a quarter inch by four. So this will actually give me a little extra paper to work with. So I'm going to turn this, go to one and a quarter. I'm just cutting two pieces right away. Okay. And that looks like one and a half. Nope, they're both one and a quarter. I just cut it funny. Okay, and then I need a larger piece that is going to be three and three quarters by three. So now remember, my card is going sideways, so I'm going to turn 
my designer series paper the way I want it to look. So we're going to turn this to three and three quarters by three. So here's my three and three quarters. And three. I'm going to do a second video on these anyway, so that's why I'm just grabbing this right away for that. Okay, I need one more piece of our garden green cardstock. So I'm going to cut this to be five and a half by three and a quarter. I said three and a quarter, not three and three quarters. <gasps> Oops. Let me cut that one right. Three and a quarter, Beth. Three and a quarter. So I'll go back over what the greens should be. So my larger piece is four and a quarter by nine and a half. So my next piece of garden green is five and a half by three and a quarter. And we'll get to the other pieces in a few moments. So right now, oh, I need to leave this out. We're going to do our scoring. So I'm going to take my nine and a half inch piece here. And I'm going to score at, I need to pull my little score arm out here. I don't have quite enough room with everything on my desk here. Okay. So I'm going to five and a half is my first score. Then I'm going to six and a half. So five and a half, six and a half. Eight inches. And nine inches. So five and a half, six and a half, eight and eight inches and nine inches. All right, so that's this piece. Now, for this piece, we're gonna score this one right away as well. So we're going to score this at one half inch. So I find when I have to do um, smaller measuring, I like to use the right side of my grid here. So I'm going to one half inch. And then I'm going to go to one and a half. So in order to get to one and a half, this is uh, one and a half all the way to that edge. Okay, so there we go. That didn't. That doesn't seem right. I did that wrong. You know, I did that earlier too when I was doing this. I don't know why. On our long side here, make sure it's a five and a half. Jeez Louise. On the long side of the five and a half by three and a quarter strip here or sheet here, you want to score it a half an inch and then a one and a half inch. So if my score line is correct, I just cut the wrong way. So cut on the long side or score on the long side. So both pieces are scored along the long side. All right. I'm going to grab this piece here and I'm going to go ahead and fold along all my score lines. Now I usually do it by hand first and then I'll come back with my bone folder because I really want some really crisp folds here. That's one of the keys when you're making a 3D item or a fun fold. Make sure you have really crisp scored lines here. All right, Because what this is going to do, I'm going to turn it this way, this is going to form our stand-up part of the box, okay? Just like that. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna show you an easy way um, to adhere all these down. Before I adhere that down, I do want to put my um, inside of my card in, and this 
piece of basic white is four by five and a quarter. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that right in there. Now you could easily make this a piece of designer series paper as well, but we're going to do the white. All right. There we go. And you know, I might just change this up because I'm thinking there's a stamp set that I'm going to use on a later card that I almost think I'd like to use on this one. So I'm going to use this stamp set on two of the cards just because I like it. Because I think it'll still go really well with the colors that we're using. Okay, so now that I have this here, I'm going to go ahead and to make things easier on myself, I know that this is going to roll in. I'm going to um, adhere the strip of my Coastal Cabana right to the front right here. So it's on this second panel here. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and ooh, I like this side better. So I'm going to use my plaid side there. I'm just taking some. Did I get adhesive on that? Hold, please. I got to rub that adhesive off there. Okay. Just going to layer that, center that right in there, just like that. All right. Now, I'm going to add adhesive right here to this one while it's laying like this, and I'm going to add it right down the whole side here. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to flip this over or flip it open and fold that under. And now I'm just going to simply, let me look. I like, I need to, how did I do this earlier? Yep. Okay. So I have my adhesive here. I'm just trying to best to figure out how to explain it. So I'm folding that tab under and then I'm just having my, um, panel with the designer series paper lay here and I'm just going to give it a good press here. This should line it up just perfect, right? I was trying to, yeah, I just couldn't figure out, I couldn't find my words to describe that to you. Hello, Becky. All right. So now we've got this part done. We're going to go ahead and grab our other piece, our other garden green piece here. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and adhere my designer series paper right on front. And I'm just changing myself up here. Hmm. I, I kind of like this one. We're going to use this side. Originally, I had planned on this side, but no, I'm going to stick with what I planned with. I'm going back to that side because I just realized um, when I trim this out, not all of them will have this blue on the back. Some of them may have trees. Some of them may have purple on it. So we're just going to stick with this side. That way, all the cards will be the same. All right. It'll still turn out really cute. Okay. So here we have that. <clears throat> now. Again, I'm going to come back in with my bone folder. Press these here. Press this here. All right. So now, let's put this right here. Okay, so now what I'm doing is, I don't have any adhesive on anything yet. I'm folding this piece in. So this piece is popped up right now. I'm going to zoom. I'm going to move my camera down a little bit. Okay, and hopefully I get this in just a little better. All right. Okay. All right. So this piece here, you can see has popped up. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bring it down just a little bit here because I want to center these two pieces in. All right. Just like that. I want to center this one here just so where I know, I know where it's going to go. What will happen is when this lifts, it will pull this panel and it will lift that up with it. All right. So just have this sitting on your desk flip this one over and you're going to add adhesive to this half inch panel. So if we're looking at it when you have it opened up, 
you're going to just do that same thing just like that okay fold it under line this up kind of center it on your card there okay give it a nice press all right now when this opens it's going to pull it i like to do this piece first and then i adhere the second piece so now i can take this I can press it down. There we go. So now we've got this part of our card. So our little tunnel. Okay. All right, let's get to decorating this one now. So that is our fun fold part of it. So it looks like it'd be a really challenging card to make. It's not really, as long as you score on the correct side of your paper. So again, when you score on your paper, score on the long side at half inch and one and a half inches on the longer piece you're scoring at five and a half six and a half eight and nine all right by having those little tabs you will be able to get this all to lay nicely all right let's zoom back out sorry i had to get a sip of mountain dew here <sighs> All right, let's get to decorating now. I'm going to pull in my Adventures Journey paper. I'm pulling in a scrap piece of white. So you'll get a little scrap piece of white in your kit as well. Always make sure that you have pieces to work with. And since I don't have a scrap handy, I'm just going to cut a piece out. So, And usually what I'll do is, I'll just give you a piece that's, for your scraps, I usually cut one sheet into quarters, and that way you have quarters to stamp with. Let's do that and throw that one in that. All right, so we have this right here. I'm going to bring in our sentiment. Now, in your envelope here, you have a strip. So we will go ahead and I'm going to stamp this in um, part in green here. I'm just debating what I want to stamp this one in. I think I want to stamp that in Corso Cabana. Let's see how it's going to look. This is such a fun stamp set. All right, let's grab our larger block here. And let's take our kayak person here. Put that right on there. I'm going to ink this up. Whenever I'm using my larger stamp, my block here, I like to take my stamp pad to my block. It just makes things easier. Okay. And I'm going to stamp this right here. Now, I have a feeling it's not going to stamp real nice because I haven't used this one before. Oh, it's stamped just fine. We'll take it. We'll take it, right? Okay. Now, just need to find my scrub here because I didn't have that setting out. Get my handy dandy mist. And I'm going to spray right on my side here that has the little raindrops. So I know that's my wet side. I try to always use one side as the wet side, one as dry. That way I know that this is when I eventually will have to clean and rinse out because it'll have ink in it. It shouldn't get all over your stamps because you're cleaning with it, but you do eventually want to rinse this out. All right, I'm going to put that aside. And we're going to take our... I just re-inked my Coastal Cabana. It usually is lighter than this, so keep that in mind. Mine is really dark because I just re-inked it. Now I want to take my sentiment from here and wishing you an adventurous journey. So in green, Granny or Granny Apple Green, Garden Green. Let's 
Excuse me. I'm going to stamp wishing you an adventurous Let's get that one clean, and then we'll get our journey. Now I happen to have a strip, so on this you'll be able to stamp all your, I guess, stuff that you need. But I just happen to have some strips handy. So now I'm going to come in with journey. Ooh, maybe an adventurous birthday. What do you think? Adventurous birthday or adventurous journey? It is interactive time. Let me know what you think. Journey or birthday? Okay, I'm going with journey. I'm not getting a response. And I'm going to do journey in my coastal cabana. And this is just a half inch strip here. So we'll do it in journey. Right there. Okay. All right. Now, this set does not come with a die. I know. It's kind of shocking, right? But there's not that many stamps in that stamp set. And there are so many other dies that you can use. We are just going to fussy cut. Yes, we are. So one of the other things I was thinking of was maybe we should color in. Ah, no, we're not going to. We're going to make this easier on ourselves. We're just going to fussy cut our, our kayak out. So I'm going to go relatively close here. Oh, I have some awful shadows going on in here. Forgot to turn on the other light. I don't mind some of the white showing. I just don't want a whole lot showing. So I'm getting pretty close. Again, take your time with it. If you're not comfortable with fussy cutting, I recommend you take a pencil and kind of outline where it is you want to cut. I don't want that point. I want that rounded. Because kayaks don't actually have a point at the end. They're rounded. So how many have you ever gone kayaking? I have. It's pretty fun. I do like it. I've also gone paddle boarding. That is fun. It is definitely very strenuous on your knees and your hips if you're not used to it. It is really good exercise. You wouldn't think that standing on a board paddling would be hard, but it, actually it's keeping your balance. That's what the strenuous part is. But the boards are pretty big. It's not like you're going to fall off. I was terrified of it at first. I'm like, I'm going to fall off. They're like, no, you're not. I'm like, I'm going to fall. You don't know me. I'm going to fall. Okay. Where did my strip go? Okay. Did anyone see where it went? Here it is. Sticking to the bottom. Yeah, you know what? You know, they make it seem like kayaks have this little tiny hole that you get stuck in. It's, it's much larger. You can, you can slide right out. So I'm just going to cut these at an angle here. Wishing you. I'm going to put this one down here. I think I'm going to even trim this a little smaller. And as I'm trimming this, I realized I don't like that. I want to go back to... What I had before, but we're not going to. So we're going to do that. We're going to take our journey and also snip it here. Snip it here. And I'm just going to put those on there just like that. So this one is not really about all the fancy stamping and dies and everything. This is truly about the fun fold. So when I'm doing these cards, I'm not going all out on my stamping. I really am focusing on this fun fold. So you can embellish and go nuts on your card like you want. But I'm going to keep this relatively simple. I am going to pop this up on dimensionals. I kind of decided I like, 
I like how that looks. And since I really have this whole card, I don't have to stick to right to that layer. I can kind of go like this. So let's go ahead and put our dimensionals on. I'm going to actually use my mini dimensionals here because that way, oh, where'd it go? I can put one on those oars. Yeah, it was kind of first at first a little scary when I first got up on the paddleboard. Um, but you know, the guy that was showing me how was really nice. It was on a trip that my husband and I took to Florida. And um, it was originally supposed to be in the ocean at sunset. So I was all excited about that. And the guy called and said, hey, would you mind changing it to be a moonlight one in one of the local lakes? I'm like, sure, that seems kind of fun. Okay. What Beth forgot to think about was, there are them near crocodiles there. Okay, alligators. And their lakes and ponds. Hello. What was I thinking? Oh, I shouldn't have probably put talking and thinking about where my dimensionals go not a good thing so i need to pull two of my dimensionals off here i think oh i might actually be okay don't go too far up on these <laughs> because it might stick to where you don't want it to so when i put this down i need to make sure that i'm actually staying on my paper so it doesn't get stuck to anything else okay so this one I can put kind of tucked in right here as long as it's not going to go too far over so I feel like having those angles there are not helping me for this card so we're just going to trim them off so I kind of actually you know what we're gonna do I'm going to put this one right here. Wishing you an adventurous. And then I'm going to, because I know if I try and stamp and line that up, I probably won't get it lined up. So I am just going to trim this. Just so it's the width of my right. I'm gonna show you another tip. So if you're working on your work surface and you don't have a silicone mat handy, take your dimensional sheet and use that to prevent your adhesive from getting all over your table. But I'm gonna put this let's see, it's gonna pop up here. I'm gonna put this right at the edge here. Wishing you an adventurous journey. All right. So there is your card. And we'll put some embellishments on in just a few minutes. I'm going to do, like I said, all my embellishments at the end. So we can get to our next handful. All right. Let's move those out of the way. Put some of my things back. Okay, card one, done. Let's put all of our extra pieces here back in our envelope. So I have them in here. Step, step, step. Okay. All right. Card one, done. So I am actually going to put, I'll leave that out. Put this back in my handy dandy little class kit bag. Because this is where I keep my pattern and then I keep my supplies for my card. So you won't get the pattern with yours. Just saying, you'll get a PDF tutorial that gets emailed to you when you uh, place your $35 order or $50 order. Okay, so now here is our next one. I'm going to put this away because I don't need it right now. We'll use that on the next card. So 
so this was kind of funny. So we had a team meeting this week, and um, Amy and my Amy and our intros team came up with a card very similar to this. I'm like, oh, that's really cute. You should know how to make it. You know what? I had this one sitting here for the last couple months because I've been kind of planning this fun fold series. So I planned out all the card layouts. I'm like, you dork. It's the same one you planned out. But I'm glad she showed that because it reminded me that I really wanted to do this card. All right. So <clears throat> on this one, and I have this out because you know what I do is on my little templates, I always like to make a little template out of my scraps. So I write down my measurements. So that way when I come back to this card, I'm like, oh, what the heck did I do on this one? I can just flip it open and say, oh, there it all is. Oop, there it is. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So I have, you'll be getting a vanilla envelope. Why I put mine in white, I don't know. I have a piece of crumb cake, which is eight and a half by five and a half. We're going to score that at four and a quarter. I have another piece of crumb cake which measures, and this is really handy for me to reference over here, eight and a half by three. I have two pieces of vanilla, which are two and seven eighths by five, or four and one eighth. So two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. Put this back in here. All right. And this is actually... The other card that I was going to use the adventurous um, journey on, but I'm just going to switch out what stamps that I used originally. I'm going to go back to the food for you. This is going to be our little St. Patrick's Day card. Since I switched that one up, all right. So since I switched it up, I do have to cut recut my cardstock. I mean, recut my designer series paper. Um, that's the color I want. They're in your kit. So, we're going green. So I have a piece of Evening Evergreen and Soft Succulent designer series paper. And I am going to cut this. So yours will already be cut for you, just so you're aware. Um, it'll be one or the other. Actually, you're going to get one of each because you get two two cards per design. So you're going to get one of each of these. And you can choose whatever side paper you want to use. That kind of could be fun. We'll see. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to cut this at four inches. by five and a quarter. So I'm basically, I'm cutting for both cards right now. Just makes it easier if you're doing both at the same time. All right. These are scraps. Now, let's get to our other things here. So on this one, I'm gonna grab my Brood For You dies. my brood dies. It's called brood for you. Um, Stampin' Up's kind of changed some of the way they've done things. They started calling the stamp set and the dies the same name to make it easier on us to find them when we go through our stash. Because I can't tell you how many times I was looking for, uh, my friends are like seashells dies the other night. And it's not called friends are like seashells. It's called sea seaside something. I'm like, really? Really? <laughs> So now they're making it easier for us. All right. We're going to take this one. We're going to score our base here, which is eight and a half by five and a half at four and a quarter, just like we do any normal card. All right. Now, here's where our differences come in. So you're going to be actually doing this when you get your card. And I'm, just, I'm really distracted by the shadows that I'm seeing. I guess I'm not really... You're not seeing them on my, you're not seeing them there. So that's always good. All right. I'm going to slide my um, cardstock in. So I'm going from that little scored corner to my, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can push this up a little bit more. 
Okay, so I'm going from my scored corner to my bottom corner, right? Now, <clears throat> one of the things I'm going to tell you about this is you need to just be patient with yourself and get those lined up. So I have them right in that little grid line, okay? And then just run your trimmer through. Okay. Just like that. Scrap piece for whatever you want later. Okay, so now we have that. Next, we're going to take our designer series paper. Just making sure that that's the right size. And I'm going to cut from corner to corner. So corner to corner. bring back in our card base and what I'm going to do so I have two pieces here I'm going to be layering one on that little flap in front okay and one over here okay and I am just giving it a little bit of a layer so. and there'll be there'll be space between the two pieces here So I have this and this. I'm almost thinking now that I'm going to flip these over. If I can. Well, let me see if I can. No, I'm not going to be able to. <gasps> Darn. Okay. I guess I'm stuck with my dots. I was thinking I'd just be able to flip it, but not so much. Oh, yeah, I should be. No. Okay, so I'm stuck with my dots. All right, that's all right. It'll still look cute with that. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere these down. So I'm going to grab my liquid glue here. Okay, come on. This is a new one. Why are you getting stuck? Okay, there must just be a glue jam in here. So, I'm going to grab my hand down the bottle here. And I want to make sure that I'm getting into that corner. Okay. Very important. So, I don't need a lot of glue, I just need a thin line of glue and sometimes using these fine tips work a little bit better just for the fact that it's not going to gush all over because it's such a fine line all right again line that up give yourself a little bit of a layer there and then just smooth it out because you're using liquid glue, you have a little bit of wiggle room, so if you need to move it, you can. But once you really push down and burnish it, it's not going to move. I'm right. get this piece and do the same thing. Make sure I get my corners. Because I mean, you're taking all the time to make this awesome fun fold. You don't want your corners peeling up on you. Just saying. All right. Okay. If you want, before you really press that one down, just fold your other part in. There we go. All right. Now, don't adhere this piece down. You want this piece to flap like that. We're going to take our 8.5 by 3 inch piece, and we're just going to fold it right in half. So you could score it, or I'm just do what I'm doing with a bone folder. All right, we have our two pieces of vanilla. Oops, I didn't, I didn't score that very nicely. Hold on, we need to re press on that. There we go. All right, so one is going to go on the inside, one is going to go on the outside. Um, let's go ahead and grab in our stamp set before we start doing that because we'll want to decide 
what we want to have displayed. And I am going to grab my little beer mugs here. Right? And on a scrap piece of vanilla that you have in your little class kit here. Oh, you know what? I kind of like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do these because they're going to make it easier to open. So I'm going to stamp my glass outline. I'm also going to stamp my green beer. All right. So I'm going to pull in. <coughs> well, you know, it's not going to really be green. It's going to be this, this color. Well, that's the color we're making it. Oh, I should have my shaded spruce out. Or maybe not my shaded spruce. My, um, evening evergreen. It's a really dark beer. <laughs> In fact, you know what? Instead of stamping it green, let's go ahead and stamp it early espresso. Make it look like one of the, um, you know, those really dark beers. What is, what is that called? The Not Oktoberfest. Um, oh my gosh. My mind is just drawing a blank. It's a dark beer. It's a really heavy Guinness. Yeah, Guinness. That's what I'm thinking. Hello, Barbara. All right. I just want to cover that up. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just stamp this in my... I need to put this on a block before I lose it. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this in my Memento Black. You can definitely use your oh you know what I thought of better color combinations I'm sorry again when I design the class I don't always design the stamping until I get ready to actually assemble it I am going to switch out colors because I realized that I can use my early espresso for my detail but I can use my soft suede for my Guinness beer I think that would be a much better combination. So let's go ahead. And I've got one. And I'm going to stamp two of them right away. Two. Now it could be Pepsi or it could be Diet Coke or, you know, whatever. Got my scrap in from the other day. I'm going to pull in my... Now, I actually want to have a piece of white here to stamp on because I really want to see... Um... Oh, no. This is fine. I'm going to stamp up on top here because it's going to appear different on vanilla. I think we will just use right here. So I'm going to look through my stamp if I get it equally inked. I'm going to look through my stamp and just place this right here. Okay, my stamp pad needs to be re-inked there. All right. Now, if I really wanted, I could stamp the little bubbles and no, I was thinking beer and soda is what I was thinking when I said that. <clears throat> they definitely have different flavors. Smarty pants. Going to now you could use the dies to cut these out. I'm just going to fussy cut them out. I'm okay with doing that today. But if you want to make the cards exactly like I'm making them, you'll need to have the brood, brood for you stamp set. If not, I'm sure you have another stamp set you could use. This is all about learning fun folds and having the directions and the supplies to make a couple of fun folds. And the reason I'm sending you two in each kit, two of each design, is so that 
You can send one, but you can make one as your own and keep it as your template. And I think this time when I write up the tutorials, last time I didn't do it. So those of you that got it last time, I'll email it to you. I think what I'm going to end up doing is writing the measurements down so that you can print it out and actually adhere it to the back of your card. So that way you have the measurements for your template. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Okay. All right, so we have our little things here. So, yeah, tonight is kind of... I didn't realize that I was doing such masculine cards all night, I guess. I don't know. I guess the guys are on my mind today. Okay, yeah, my husband is on my mind today because we're going on vacation, and he still is impacted. <sighs> no, you could slide this all the way down. I like sliding it up just a little bit here so that it doesn't get caught. All right, so what I'm going to do to get this to go in place is I'm just going to simply open my folder. I'm going to grab my adhesive. Okay, well, I'm grabbing my Seal Plus. Um, just because that's going to be opened and closed a lot, I want to make sure that's going to stay in place. All right. So now I can just, oops, I moved it. All right. So before I put it down, I'm just going to line it back up where I want, because once I press it down, it's going to stay. So we're going to double flap here. All right, let's go ahead and grab our sentiments in here. Okay, let's see, what is the sentiment I want to put on the outside? Because that's going to determine what I'm going to put on the inside. So we're going to have our two glasses here. And I feel like my glasses are floating in the air. So I need to do something right here to make it so they're not floating in the air, right? So I'm either going to put my sentiment down here or I have to have another strip of paper. Okay. I have an idea. Um, okay. So you can make this beer or soda, whichever one you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and it does look like Diet Coke. I'm going to stand by Oya one or several. Let's get out of that block here. Across the bottom. And I am going to stamp that in my Evening Evergreen. Almost thinking because that's really bugging me, kind of you know. It's floating and it's kind of bothering me. Okay, I kind of like that. So, I'm going to put that extra strip that I had for my designer series paper right on the bottom there. So, let's pull this apart here, let's get this adhered. So put this right at the bottom. That way I can stamp my sentiment above the glasses. So just get that straight, flip it over, trim it off. Grab your sentiment. Oh, that says I grabbed the wrong sentiment. <laughs> I wanted, I owe you one, and I grabbed the thing with your birthday. It's your birthday. Actually, let's see. Let's see how OL yes will fit. OL yes. Okay. So it could fit. It could we could do it. Yep, we'll do it right there. Alright. Ooh, that got to be a hot mess. Let me clean that off. Again, this must be one I just re-inked as well. <laughs> so the other weekend I went through and decided I'm re-inking all my my stamp pads. Looks like I really did. Hey? Get that one 
really clean here. There we go. Much better. I do not want to go to all this work to have a big chunk of blob. All right. So I'm tapping multiple times, just tapping very lightly. All right, and I'll put this in my upper corner yet. Yeah. Right there. All right, we'll go ahead and clean that again. And now we'll take our sentiment and stamp it on the other one. And we'll do the birthday one. And again, I'll do this in my evening evergreen. Another round for your birthday. And for grins and giggles, let's go ahead and stamp one more glass in there. Because we can. We have the stamps. We have the inks. We have the paper. Let's do it. So, I'll grab my early espresso. Now, for just grins and giggles here, I'm going to grab this. Because I want to see What do you think? Should we make a green beer for the inside? Or should we leave it the brown? You tell me. This is the interactive portion of our show. Let's clean my stamp here and wait for you to tell me what you'd like to see. Let me pick up a couple things while I'm waiting. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 Okay, brown? Okay. Brown it is. Oh, I didn't want to stamp on that. So I'm just going to stamp it right here at the bottom. Ooh, I just made that fit. Woohoo! Grab our... Soft suede again. I must really use soft suede a lot and not realize it. Or I inked it pretty poorly. One of the two. Alright. <clears throat> so how many out, eat, out there drink green beer on St. Patrick's Day? No, when I was young and dumb and in college, that was the thing to do. I am not a big green beer fan because, you know what? It is food coloring in my beer, and it makes my beer flat. Not a fan. I don't need to show that I'm out for St. Patrick's Day. In fact, I don't even go out for St. Patrick's Day anymore. It's, yeah, it's not, I don't know. Not a thing for me. Not a thing I need to do. Okay, let's go ahead and put our little cups on there. We'll go ahead and put these on dimensionals. And then we'll get to our third card. Which I think you're going to like. I'm going to use the sweet citrus bundle with it. And Regency Park paper. All right, let's go ahead and hear this down. Seal, seal plus. Hey, so I have a tip for you. When you're using your seal or seal plus, if you have this, look how I have it, like this to your paper, it works better. Before with our mono adhesive, you could just run like this. For this one, really angle it up and down. It will come out much easier for you. Um, I know I struggled a long, long time getting used to Stampin' Seal Plus. Now they've gotten the hang of it, I'm like, I'm loving it. I use it a lot. Okay. I don't know why I put that lid back on. 
So I still start off like that. I'm like, oh no, straighten it up. And I also have heard from people that um, people who really like Seal Plus have a hard time using regular Seal and vice versa. I don't know why that is, but I've heard. That's what I've heard. Okay, so first card, second card. Now, the third one is not a masculine card. We had to have something for the girls in there, right? So, let's go ahead and put our stamps away here. Put my little extras away. So there. I don't know I didn't even use it, guys. How do you like that? This is just so I can be able to put stuff away later. Now, I need to grab... Did I pull it out already? I grabbed out the stamp set and the dies that I need. But I didn't grab out the sweet citrus dies. So... We may end up fussy cutting them. Hmm. No, because I don't want to fussy cut them. I want that embossed image in there. Because once I started using that, I fell in love with it. And I don't think I can go back. So just so you know, as, as just a second thought. On this card... You could use your Sweet as a Milkshake right on there, just saying. Or you could use the ice cream cones on here, too. Just saying. Another alternative to making that card. Okay. So I did find all the things I'm looking for. I really was most interested in my embossing folder. So this is a hybrid embossing folder. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you can actually... Put your die in your embossing folder and die cut and emboss at the same time. <gasps> Wait, stop. I know. It's amazing. It really is. Did I sound like an infomercial enough on that one? <gasps> oh my, where is it? There it is. Scared me. I thought I lost a die. So what happens in here is when you open this up, you can place your... Oh, I got it on the wrong side. You can place your die here. Right there. Let me close this. You set it in here, and when you wiggle your die around, it kind of gets caught on these little grooves. So these little grooves here, so you want to use the side that has a little stampin' up image. So there's grooves that stick up. So when you put your um, die cut, your die in there, it will layer right on there just perfect. And now, when you put your paper on top and run it through, it'll die cut out those perfectly. Because the stamp, actually, is all lined up for you just like that. So you can get that right in there. Right. So today I'm not going to um, actually be doing the die cutting. I'm just going to be stamping and embossing. Right. I am going to be using the little flowers though in here to do some die cutting too. Okay, so now that I'm showing you what I'm using there, let's get out the items that I need for this card. Now, I'm using the Regency Park Designer Series paper. So you will be getting two different color card bases because you're going to have different color combinations here. So this is going to be one color combination. This is going to be the other color combination. Right? And I really um, want to do this one today. So now I'm just going to pull my list of instructions here so I make sure I'm telling you the right measurements of everything. But yeah, you'll be getting um, a little bit of each here. So you get the two different designs. Okay. Put this back in its kit so I know where it is. And look, we're using Petal Pink. 
I know it's been such a long time since we've used this color. <laughs> and the other color we'll be using is Sweet Sorbet. So you're probably asking, what is she going to do with that? I'm making ruby red grapefruit. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> okay. So let's start with our card base. Our card base here is four and a half by 11. And we're just going to fold it in half or you can score it, whichever, whichever floats your boat. You know, and we're, we're going to go ahead and score it so that you can see what we do. So. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Okay, so we're going to score our four and a half by 11 at five and a half. Make sure you get your trimmer, your trimming blade out of the way and that you just have your scoring blade here. All right. Now we're going to basically fold it in half again. So this one, I'm just going to slide over and I'm going to go to two and three quarters because that is half of five and a half. So you're going to two and three quarters and five and a half. All right. I'll bring that in in a moment again when I need to cut my papers. And I want to, hold on please, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing on my card here. I've got a goofy crease there. I'm going to fold this one up. All right. Now this card is going to open this way. So normally you might have thought, hey, we're going to do this for the card. Nope, we're going to change it around and we're going to do it from the top this time. All right. So to do that, we need to put some cardstock and designer series paper here and here. So let's start with that. We're going to have a piece of designer series paper that's going to layer on a piece of basic white paper. So this is three and a quarter by five inches. I'm going to put that right on the inside here. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you another little tip I have for saving some paper. This designer series paper is going to be cut at. Do, 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 do. Three and a half by four and three quarters. So we'll go to three and a half here. Cut that down. And now I'm going to go to four and three quarters. Okay, I like using the other side of my trimmer. It's just easier for me to see, so I just need to switch it around here. So I can see my four and three quarters better. There we go. All right. So this is going to layer on this. But before I actually do this, I want to run this through my cut and emboss machine so I can have my little rectangle. So I'm just going to put this off to the side for right now. I'm going to get my other piece of designer series paper cut. This is going to be um, three and a half by two. So I'm just going to cut it at two inches here. And you're just going to get a strip of this. Okay. And then um, I'm going to go by three and a half, I said. Right. Right. And my other piece of white, where did it go? Where's my other piece of white? Is it back in my folder here? What did I do with it? Okay, they're just going to find the other piece of white I had. All right. Here it is. Okay. So on this one, I need this piece of white. Now this, um, this piece will be already be done for you. So I'll be cutting that. You'll get a strip of two inch by six inch designer series paper and a piece of designer series paper cut to size as well. Actually, you know what? I like, I'm just going to send you the whole six by six sheet. So on, um, oh, 
Oh no, we're doing two different cards. I should shush shush both. I'll have these all cut for you. This is going to be three and three quarters by two and a quarter. I don't know why that popped in my head, but it did. Sometimes I just need to shush, right? By three and three quarters. All right. So this is going to be my layer for this. So here's what we have so far. We have this. And we have this okay, just like that so that is the start of our card now <clears throat> I said that we were going to take our rectangle dies so I've got this larger piece of designer or white card stock here and let's get out our rectangle dies which those are not rectangle dies that's two and three takes And okay, what I want to do here is I want to kind of pull out my my lemon shape here, okay, my citrus shape, and I want to see which one of these it's going to fit best on because this one was the same width as that, and I don't feel that that would be appropriate. So this die will be die cut for you. So when you get your piece, you're going to find a hole missing in your layer because it's going to be die cut for you. Yeah, I think this will be the size. So. I'm going to pull that in. I'm going to pull in my big shot. Ooh. Pull my plates here. Oh. What can I do with my plates? Oh. They're on the floor here. I just have to get them picked up. They're really far away. I don't know why I did that. I've got my base plate, my number two plate, and my cutting plates. And I have stuff from last night still on those plates. Okay. So, when you get your layer in your kit, it's going to look like Your layer will look like this because I've already done the die cutting for you, right? So that's how that will be. And when I'm doing these, I don't like to pull out necessarily each of the kit components. It's easier to show you from step one sometimes how you do all these. So I'm going to put these dies away before I lose them. This piece here. Okay, so now I can go ahead and start assembling my pieces here, my layers. So I'm just bring in my seal here. And I'll layer that onto this. I think this uh, designer paper is cute because it has that little kind of crosshatch looking in it. But you can use any designer series paper you have. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a piece of all the way around. And put this on the inside of our card, just like so. Alright, I'm going to take our other layer here and put this right here, just like so. And here this to our card front. There we go. All right. So now we need something on the card. So that's where this rectangle comes into place. 
This is going to be right here. I'm going to pop it up using dimensionals. But before I do that, I want to do my stamping and add my embellishments on here. So what is going to be our stamping and our embellishments? Well, this is where the lemons come into play. I am going to, I really just want to stamp my one lemon here. I want my large, I want, I want, I want, um, I need my large right here and I need some colors. I almost feel like so saffron would be good for this one. On the other card, I would use Mel uh, Mango Melody. And then this one for the rind of the grapefruit, I think this will work fine. All right. So now I'm just going to ink up. Actually, I'm going to ink up these two. Just like that. I'm going to stamp it on my scrap here. I need this block again. Now, if you have a stamparatus, you can use a stamparatus too. I'm using this block; is is totally fine. So now, I'm going to stamp. Now, trying to put this back on my sheet is always fun. There we go. I'm going to pull in the innards of my fruit, my citrus innards, and on this one, I'm going to start it with Puddle Pink. Then I'm going to take my Sweet Sorbet and kind of go around the edges. Kind of make it a little bit like a ruby red grapefruit. Not quite, but yeah. So I'm just really kind of dabbing it on there. So we'll see how it looks. So move this off to the side. I need a scrap paper on my table here. Let's use this. All right. And I'm going to just line these up right inside. What do you think? Grapefruit or not? We're going with it. All right. Probably could have used a sponge dauber to daub that on a little bit better, but I'm, I'm good with what, what it is. Okay, now that we got those stamped, I'm going to run this through my embossing folder before I stamp anything more because I don't want to like emboss over my folder, my flowers. I might even just grab a separate stamp. All right, so on this, I'm just going to turn my cardstock here to match my. Okay, come on, get in here. Why aren't you on yet? Well, just need to get this little bugger lined up. I need to like get it at the right angle here and okay I know an easier way to get it at the right angle <laughs> uh, it's Friday I don't want to challenge myself anymore so I'm just going to line this up in here you know I just don't see why this doesn't line up a little bit better I'm not getting it there now I've got it all right 
So to help myself out, I'm going to grab a piece of post-it note tape. I just tape that right in place. Now, let's get this one right in there. And I'm just going to slide that right in there. Oh, now they layer just fine. <sighs> and just, oh, I just moved it. Oh, I didn't move too far. All right. <clears throat> there we go. We're going with whatever it is right now. Let's bring in our die cut machine here. This is a 3D embossing folder. So all I need is my base plate and my number four plate. So I put my base plate in first. Then I put my embossing folder with the fold going in, the hinge going in, and then my embossing plate on top. Now, if you have a different die cut machine, you'll have to know what your sandwiches are for a thick embossing folder. Oh, well, it hopped around a little bit, but that's okay. So you can see, I, I actually should have done it that way, and I did it reverse. That's okay. It still looks kind of cute. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this out. And I could have definitely went ahead and used my die cuts. The other thing you can do with this, and since we're here, I'm going to show you a second technique. I think you'll like this other technique too. Because it's another way to get color on your. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to actually go through the whole technique. I'm just going to explain explain it to you. So I would take a piece of white cardstock. I'd put it in my embossing folder. I'd run it through. Then when I have this, I can take a sponge dauber and just kind of pat on areas that are popped up. Okay. That will pick up my color. In fact, here, actually, I'm going to use a, what's this one? All right. I don't know which one this was, but we'll go ahead and use it. So I can take my petal pink here and I don't know what was on this one before. It's not picking up color. Okay. So then you can color this in. And you would just keep going for the till you get to the color you want. And on the outside, you do the same thing with the yellow that you want. And this is where I was talking, you could just dab a little bit of other color in there. So you could do it that way as well. We're just going to go with that. Because, again, this is just my sample card. And I'm just showing you the technique. It's all about the fun fold. Not about my stamping tonight. All right. So I'm going to put this one just like that. And then, uh, let's see, I want to have a sentiment. So I need a sentiment that's small enough to fit up here. So we're going to say thanks a bunch. I'm going to stamp that in sweet sorbet. So let's get that stamped first. We'll pop this on using our dimensionals here. Okay, we only want to do a couple across the top here. Right. 
Some sponge. I'm going to put one more in here. I feel like it needs one somewhere. Didn't feel like my tag was getting enough support, so I thought I'd back it up. <laughs> okay. All right. And then decide where you want your, you know, your grapefruit to go. And... You know, what the heck, let's just pop these up on dimensionals too. And notice I'm keeping my dimensionals more towards the middle here. That is so if I go off my tag a little bit, I don't have to worry about that catching. So yeah, I want this one on top. Set one. Again, same with this one. I'm keeping them towards the middle. So if it hangs over the tag, I don't have to worry about that. And I want to overlap it. So now I can if I keep those in the middle. All right. So now we just need to decorate the inside just a little bit more. So what we'll do is we're going to grab our little flowers. And I'm going to grab a little scrap of white here. I'm sure I have a little piece available. Here we go. And... I'm just going to go ahead and stamp my flowers uh, using my poppy, uh, I almost said poppy parade, sweet sorbet. So I'm going to stamp two of them. Okay. Then I'm going to take this handy dandy other little stamp here. And I'm going to put it on the corner of my block. Like that. So what this is, I want to use my So Saffron. These are the inside of my two small flowers. So I can look through my stamp here and line these up. And now I have two little insides stamped. And I don't have to have that single little dot trying to get into that tiny little flower. Now there is a single one for the larger flower. I'm going to just get that lined up in there. That lined up in there. Sorry, I did have to stick my head in the way. And I do want to clean these stamps right away before I move them out of the way and they get lost. Because we know in Beth's world, tiny stamps disappear forever and ever. Again, I think they attach to my dog and they walk out of the room. However, Cooper isn't um, isn't moving a lot today. <laughs> He's a little exhausted from his little vet trip. Poor little guy. He gets so anxious about going, so we had to give him you know, pills to kind of sedate him so that he wasn't such a wreck going in. Because, I mean, he gets to be a wreck. He works himself up into a little tizzy. He's worse than take... Well, you know what? I don't know. One of my sons, I think, was even worse see I lost a stamp where did it go it's not in here where did it go I was talking and it fell off oh, darn it here it is found it get back in your home you stay there um, so anyways, he gets to be a little bit of a wreck. So, <sighs> yeah, I had to take him in, had to sedate him, and he is, like, zonked. <sighs> he wasn't sure how to walk this morning because we had to start the sedation last night at just some pills and stuff. So he is zonked out. So he couldn't figure out how to walk yes this morning. It was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing because, you know, he loves going out when it snows, so it snowed a lot yesterday. Um, I mean, a lot. And he walked outside and he looked like he'd never seen snow before. Yeah, he was so confused. Like, <laughs> he's like, what did you do to me? <laughs> Poor guy. But he was the most loving dog ever. So he was back to like his normal self. It was just, it was amazing. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I see my dog again. 
So I'm glad we went in. He has a new vet and she is wonderful. So it was a very pleasant experience. It used to be very stressful. Okay, let's get our last little flower in. Let's run this through the die cut machine real quick. Oops. I bumped them. I'm living a little on the wild side right now because I'm not <laughs> I'm not taping it down. I'm just taking a risk. Running it through. Yeah, so anyways, he survived his ordeal. Normally he would be playing in here, but I think he is so wiped out, he is just sleeping somewhere. And poor little guy last night, he, he is trying to sleep by me, and he doesn't know what to do with himself. He was so confused. He's like, why why can't I sleep? And then he, like, he'd lay his head down, and all of a sudden he'd pop back up. So I was giggling. I'm like, he has a bed spins. <laughs> Yes, and I were laughing about that this morning. All right, so we'll just put a couple little flowers randomly in here. Yeah, I just kind of like that, like that. So we'll just take some liquid glue. Now I could put a little piece of white in them right in the middle, and you know, have a little sentiment in there. So you know what? I had that one rectangle. Let's just put that in here, and we'll just. I'll leave it blank so I can sign it later. Okay. Where did it go? It went inside here. Okay. So I just put that right down inside. It's going to be covered. So that's the good thing about it. Let's just put it in. Do, do, do. Just center it right in here. There we go. All right. So that is our third and final fun fold for today. So if you'd like this class sent to you, please um, submit a $35 order in my online store using the host code. That host code tells me that you want this class. Oh, we've got embellishments. Let's pull these in and let's grab some embellishments here. Let's find something that will go with all of them. You know, I kind of think that, oh, I don't like that. So I have iridescent pearls here. Just trying to see what else I have. I have a ton. I have normal rhinestones. I think we'll just use those iridescent pearls. Oh no, I found something more fun. Okay, so this is a new embellishment from our mini catalog. This it goes with the legendary ride suite, and these are called um, adhesive back studs. So they just look kind of fun. There's different shapes, different elements on here, so let's see what we want to use. Let's start with this one. Okay. So when you spend $50 in my online store, you'll get a package of these and um, the class kit. Now, please note that um, class kits will not be sent out until about the 1st of March uh, because I am going on vacation. I need a little time to be able to order and um, get them in so I can send them out. Okay, we'll just put three in that. So see how simple that one was? This one, I think I'm gonna use these little diamond shapes here. We'll just put it like that. Oh, you know, I don't like that. Oh, please, we'll put one over here. Okay, come on. All right. So kind of like the same canoe shape. That's why I went with that. And then this one, I'm going to go back with the, well, I'll just go back with these. And I'll put one here. One over here. I'll put one right here. Okay. 
There we go. Alrighty. So have a wonderful weekend. Um, I am trying my best to get something um, video for Hump Day Lunch Break Live done. I'm running short on time. I definitely not will not have something planned for Thursday. Uh, so next Thursday we won't have class. Um, so yeah, I apologize for that. I was really trying to get something going, but just not able, just not able to do it. So um, watch for videos, watch for some posts of different cards. I'll have some things throughout the week. But take care. Love you. Have a great week, and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye.